Well, hello, Facebook, and yeah. maybe everybody else at some point. I am gathered here today with my eldest offspring, the very original, my 11-year-old, almost 12-year-old. And uh, he's nervous today because he's a YouTuber and he's not used to being behind the camera. So, oh well, this is where we are. <laughs> Um, this week we have some exciting news and then we'll get kind of more into some of the stuff that Evan is into. But um, this week I'm pretty excited because Revolutions book three, we got all of the edits done and they are off to beta readers very shortly. Digital copy, this dude right here has the first digital copy. <laughs> so he's going to be reading yeah. um, book <coughs> three here momentarily. Yep. And um, we've got the print versions already uploaded to create space and that will be coming soon as well to beta readers so I'm pretty excited and uh, anyway so with you what's going on with you we've got so Evan is one of my beta readers yep. he is in the age bracket at the very beginning of what I would recommend for um, the Pendamus Chronicles it does have some strong language some partial sexual content so if you're not used to or haven't discussed those sort of things with your kids probably don't want anyone younger than 11, 12, 13, I guess, depending, uh, be reading these books. But nothing, it doesn't get too graphic, but still. Anyhow, right? Yeah. 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 I, I put him in an awkward position there. I'm a mom. It's my job. <laughs> so anyway, um, one of the things I wanted to do with Evan, since he's actually been one of my beta readers and he's read both Pandamus and uh, Rev or Polarities, see if I can remember the titles of my books here. Um, I wanted to kind of pick his brain and let him tell you a little bit about what he thinks about the stories and then also kind of about his interest and kind of where he went into the whole um, science fiction thing. So why don't we start with that actually? Did you, what, what got you involved in science fiction? What did you, or actually even reading? I just liked reading science fiction. Yeah? I thought that was cool. Was it, um, initially what finally got you to start reading more because I know yeah. for, for boys especially it's hard to get them involved in reading because they have a tendency to get bored so very quickly don't they ah. Ah, yes so for him he he struggled with reading at first and then once he found his niche now I can't uh, stop him reading he reads all the time and sometimes to the detriment of his bedtimes uh, but um, now he's, he's branched out into other things. You've read Hardy Boys, you've read Goosebumps, you've read Fear Streets, yeah, one of my favorites because I have books from them from like 900 years ago. Um, what, else, what else do you read? Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Captain Underpants. Canto, yeah, the Underpants Man. Uh, and falling off chairs, evidently. <laughs> Alrighty. Welcome to my household with children. This is nonstop. Yes. Hi, Janine. I just noticed that you joined. Welcome. <laughs> I can't see your comments unless Facebook has uh, changed this whole dynamic. Let me like see if I can scroll through. No, video only mode. It still doesn't show me the stupid... Uh. <laughs> see, she's laughing. I can see your emoji and that's it. Rats. I can't see any comments. So, well, I don't even know if you're making a comment, come to think of it. But, you know, hey, whatever. I can't see comments. <laughs> I got to look into that more. Anyway, um, okay, back to the books. Back to reading. <clears throat> Before, you know, Abbott and Costello or whatever this is. So, yeah. Um, with boys, especially with reading, it's finding their, their groove. And when did you start first start reading Pendamus? Do you remember? Well, I think when it first came out, and well, then I stopped for a little bit, and then I started reading it pretty recently, maybe a few months ago, six months, I don't know. And then I finished that, and then Mom you finished can actually look into the camera Polarities, maybe. right? and then I read that really quickly. Oh my gosh, there's a comment! I see a comment. Sorry, I'm adjusting this camera because it just went flopping. Hello, hola. I see the comment. Very nice. That's the first time I've ever seen a comment. <laughs> that is very awesome, Janine. Yay. Okay, uh, sorry. Continue. I forgot what I was going to say. You said uh, you started reading it again, and you when, I, when pen, or Polarities came out, you read that. Yeah, really quickly. It was in a week. Yeah, you did read it really fast. And then... Did you find that one was okay? I'm, I'm a little nervous and concerned about 
uh, polarities. It's not as, um, what's the word I want to use? It's not as dramatic, I guess, in some ways. But I still really liked it. Did you? Yeah. Did you think there was enough action in there for you as a boy? Yeah. Okay, good. So, young boys, there's still action. It's okay. Um, Runa goes through a completely different kind of transformation through those books, and so she's she's a different person. She's not quite with the rest of the team uh, that she was in with book one, but are you looking forward to Revolutions? Yeah. Yeah? I really want to read it. I just haven't had the time. Well, I just downloaded it to your Kindle le like yesterday afternoon, so... Yeah, I know. Breathe, man. Yesterday. It was it was the Fourth of July. I know. <laughs> By the way, Happy Fourth, everybody. Our brains are like completely fried from being up until midnight or some ungodly hour because we live almost an hour away from where the fireworks were. And you know, trying to get out of that whole thing, it's craziness. Oh, sorry, I'm reading your comment, Janine. What? Dinner table reading books. <laughs> You shouldn't encourage your kids to read even if it's at the dinner table? Yeah. I don't know that I would encourage that, actually. That's like reading your cell phone when you're when you're um, at the dinner table. Okay, just for those of you who, who haven't seen this comment yet and who might be watching this later on, um, she was saying that her mother-in-law told her that her husband uh, would come to the dinner table reading a book and that it upset her. And so Janine was saying, uh, I was thinking you shouldn't, shouldn't you encourage your kids to read even if it's at the dinner table? And I, I kind of, I don't think that would be a good thing. I think it would irritate me as well. It's like bringing your cell, cell phone to the table. I, I don't think that would be a good thing to do. Uh, put the books <clears throat> down, put the cell phones down, enjoy each other for the, you know, well, in our house, it's like an hour trying to get kids to eat because children are obnoxious and unless it's like their favorite meal on the planet they don't eat it but anyway I digress uh, yeah so well with, you know with you it's ex like the whole science fiction thing has kind of expanded beyond <clears throat> books because you're very into stem and doing, yeah. doing stem stuff and he's into robotics one of the big things that he's very into I don't know if you guys have heard of plum geek but if you have not check them out they're a very very cool um, kids educational robotics uh, and coding like companies. So they do these these robots that are designed to help kids learn coding and learn learn how to do robotics. And uh, again, Plum Geek, check them out. They're really awesome. Um, yeah. Anyway, so with you, it's even exp expanded out from beyond books and technology into like just learning coding and learning robot robotics and yeah, and doing YouTube. Oh, and he's, yes, he's doing YouTube videos now, too. I don't know what that has to do with science fiction, though. Kind of does. No, I think it has more to do with the fact that I'm doing these sort of things. So he has to keep, compete with me. Stop messing with stuff. Oh. There's stuff on this table, and he's got to mess with it. He's like a fidget man. <laughs> can you can you imagine? We do have fidget spinners in this household. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I talk very fast. I'm sorry <clears throat> for those of you that uh, might not be aware. So... With um, with you, what else? Kind of where, where else has science and science fiction kind of taken you? Well, yeah, being able talk this way so they can hear you. Being able to do STEM and robotics and programming is really cool. Right. And it's really cool being able to actually code with like numbers and other things like that, other than just like dragging the blocks in. Okay. It's really cool because then you can do a lot more stuff. I'm just dragging the blocks. Sure. So explain dragging the blocks. What do you mean by that? Because a lot of the kids' programming sites will have blocks that you can just drag, and it limits the possibilities. So are you meaning like drag and drop blocks, or are you meaning like the robot moves blocks? What do you mean by that? Well, there's these blocks that just have the code already typed, and then... Ah, gotcha. They're, drag so and drop. But basically, you can't do as many things because it only limits the up blocks to like these few five things. When right. you're just coding, and when you have an actual robot to code with, you can do almost endless things. <laughs> okay, we just had a gigantic ant run across the table. No, it fell from the tree and fell onto the table. Right? Even better. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so, that's pretty cool. And that's, um, so for me, you know, as a science fiction author and... Um, someone who kind of, and it's so weird because I don't consider myself science fiction all the time. It took me a while to 
really grab onto that moniker because I always thought that it was more fantasy and dystopia at first, but um, it, it's really encouraging to me to see my kids develop because I've been writing this series now for almost seven years. Um, the first idea came out in 2010 in my brain, and so for me it's, it, it's been kind of neat to see them, and I, I don't think it's all having to do with just um, my writing. I think it's because of the, the things that we're all interested in as a family, whether it be watching Doctor Who or checking out um, the different kinds of movies that we watch even now or you know trying to encourage them to watch things like Firefly or um, oh gosh the Avengers even. I mean all these different things, um, movies and shows that are just uh, phenomenal when it comes to using your imagination and kind of taking what you already see and allowing your brain to kind of attach to those trends that you're, you're working on and, and visualizing, seeing, and pushing your mind out even farther. So that's kind of where the e-link came from because um, it, for me, I, I saw very early on that the way that technology is working, the way that using your cell phone is working, it's it could very easily just go from a phone, a handheld device, to now being implanted in your brain because everything is so um, electrically conducted. And so it's not overly different. So it's just going to be a matter of which which um, technology innovators are going to be the first one to create an e-link that allows you to see, talk, download stuff directly to your brain rather than having anything outside um, to, to control it from. Um, Janine is saying that my husband is always reading, still even, huh? Uh, he has a robotic Lego kit and he gave it to his, her nephew. Uh, have you seen any robotic kits that they have from Lego? Yes, we have actually. Evan was using those, right, Evan? Yeah, Lego Mindstorms, the yep. EV3. Um, I got to program those. It's just like the Dropbox that I was talking about earlier. It's not as fun as being able to code by itself, but for a, like, a littler kid, it would be pretty fun. Because all you have to do is download the app, and then you can drop like, the drop blocks and make it do stuff. Does that do they have the apps for just about any? <laughs> Usually, it's for a computer because you have to have a USB to plug into it. And I don't okay. know if you can do it from your phone. Maybe you can. I don't know. For any of the Lego Mindstorms, or that one in particular? I don't know about the other Lego Mindstorms because there's like three of them. Thank you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> But for the one that I was programming, the EV3, it's one of the newer ones. I know you can get things so you can make a program that you can control it from your phone, like a controller. Okay. But we didn't do that at all because we didn't have a lot of phones. At the... STEM and stuff. At... So... No, that was at STEM or was that in class? That was at STEM. Okay. Cool. So... Well, maybe that's something that eventually they'll... Because I wouldn't recommend them to, like, 12-year-olds. Maybe I would, but they might be too little. The, the Mindstorms? Yeah. Really? Well, you could use them for a lot cooler things, but for what it usually tells you... Because you, you would have to build them, and they're really hard to build. So... But which part's hard to build? The, like, robot to get all the wires in and everything. Okay. So, I don't know if I'd recommend it to older kids like older than 11 or 12 because it might get too young because just using drop blocks okay still doing that got it yeah well there you go janine <laughs> we, we we have uh dabbled in pretty much everything here well, yeah. I, I like the lego mice arms i just wish they had an app where you could program it like with code instead of the drop blocks and maybe that's something that they'll eventually go into yeah you never know it seems like a lot of companies are really kind of digging into the whole um, robotics thing for for most, I mean, even like well, like like the Legos. I mean, things that were very analog are now going more technological and getting more... Um... Yeah, because I've seen some really cool things with the Mindstorms, but it would be extremely difficult for kids Well, to everybody has them. to start somewhere, right? Yeah. So if, it, if it's a system that allows them to start lower and then work their way up towards doing something bigger. Well, yeah, I guess it would be good just if you're a little, it might be hard to build them. Mm -hmm. And then if you're older, you might not think of them as fun, as much fun as like programming. But now do you yeah. think, um, 
robotics and coding is more fun than even sitting on Terraria? Sometimes. <laughs> and if you're playing a friend, that is fun. Yeah, because Terraria can be at, um, online gaming, right? It's yes. more social and interactive that way. Yeah. So, oh gosh, we had another one of those ants drop from the sky. Oh, dear lord. We're, we're getting ant infested. Um, I'm trying to think. So, with revolutions, are you excited to read the ARC? We'll go yeah. back to that for just a minute and then we'll head out. Yeah? Yeah. So maybe um, the next time Evan's here, if he's finished the book, we'll, we'll have him hop on and tell you what he thinks of it and, well, without giving away spoilers. <laughs> right, Evan? Yeah. Oh. So, like I said, the, the third book is finished. It is uh, on its way to my beta readers. We're going to see what they have to say. And once that comes back, then I will be, um, well, I'll be working on polarities again, getting the edits done for that so that the book is ready for pre-launch. I'm going to be doing a cover reveal on the, I believe, the 24th of July. So for those of you interested in what the cover is going to look like, and possibly I'll have the pre-order available on Amazon for the digital copies. I don't think it allows, I don't think CreateSpace allows me to do a pre um a pre-order for the paperbacks, but I, I might be mistaken about that. So one or both will be available very soon for pre-order and yay! <laughs> and the um, the cover reveal will be happening very soon too. I've got a couple of book bloggers who are phenomenal, who are going to be on board with helping me do the cover reveal. Evan is zoned out trying to read. And, <laughs> and um, anyway, so that's kind of what's been going on in our world. It's been a crazy week so far. It's only Wednesday and now we've got, they're a little behind, 122 and they're doing the uh, tornado alarm at, up here in the middle of Minnesota. Okay, whatever. All right, so Evan, why don't we say goodbye and um, okay. when he's done with revolutions, I will bring well, what Evan does it back. say that I'd be interested in, maybe? Um, my husband also volunteered a couple of years at the Maker Fair. I don't know what that is, the, the Maker Fair. We what missed is that. the Maker Fair? So you'll have to let us know, Janine, what the Maker Fair is. There might be something similar like that up here. Um, Evan does do, along with my daughter, um, Ellie, she does, they, they both do the um, Inventors Camp. So it might be something similar, I'm not quite sure, where they go together and they um, spend a week inventing and doing fun things like that. So. Um, all right, Janine, let, let us know what that is, and we'll, we'll research it and see if there's anything similar. So, until next time, guys, we will talk to you guys later. Bye! Bye!